Can we make a similar easy way of generating more comprehensive tests for, uh, for our stuff in Java? Sure. We can do the exact same thing. Give me a string, I will call parse and then two string on it and see if I get back the original string uh, up to white space. Um, so same ideas that we, we saw before. Uh, I put this into, uh, I guess I should say, up in expr test. So expr uh, has all the expressions, the abstract class with most of the, with the declarations of the functions. Uh, expr test is actually where most of my tests live. Now you might say, uh, hey, why not put the tests for paren experts off in paren test and the test for parity experts off in parity test? Yeah, except that, you know, when I make an expression, say a parity expression, it contains num experts and paren experts and bin up testers inside of it and maybe nested parity experts. So the experts really get all mixed up. When I have a single expert, it's going to have all sort of types going on simultaneously. I could still, you know, it's arguable. You could separate it in separate files. I went ahead and said, I'm going to put all my tests up in expert tests that really do all the important stuff. So, okay. So just like we had before, I try to make this test case look almost identical as to the exact test cases it runs and the order and even the comments are the same in this file and the racket file. Uh, we can go ahead and make some particular programs. We can go ahead and... So I could go ahead and do things like, hey, yeah, new parse of 34 should come back with num of 34. This is a straight up unit test with no glamour attached to it, no mystery, it's just regular old j unit assert equals this and this, this and this, this and this. Uh, if you, you may or may not have used um, j unit before. It's, it's not a bad framework. Um, it's good for unit testing. It does what it does well. Okay, so um, I should mention, by the way, check expect in racket uh, reverses the arguments from how most people do tests. So when you see other people do use JUnit for tests and they call assert equals, instead of giving it the actual and the expected, they usually put the expected first and then the actual uh, rather than the other order. I'm going to stick with the same way that it did in the racket to try to keep these two files identified, but just be aware that some people, like the convention in Java is to reverse the your, your test cases are the expected followed by the actual, and we're doing it the other way around. Okay. Um, yeah, so you could go ahead and write all these different test cases, and this would be things testing for parse, that parse of these, each parse of this thing here really does give a paren object containing a num object. Uh, parse of this string really does give a bin up containing, etc., etc., etc. And then you would, that would be just checking what parse does, then I could go ahead and check eval. I'm like, hey, take the, the string 34 in angle brackets, parse it, call eval on that, I'd better get back 34. Parse of this eval should give back num of seven. And we always run a value which is gonna be a num, so it's all wrapped up and there's extra wrapping going along, it's kind of a pain. Um, and then I could have all my checks for two string as well. Okay, parse of this angle bracket 34 of two string should give back that same string. And again, you could do all that. Uh, why not automate it? Here's the exact same automation I did with the list containing E1 or E0 through E4. Um, the code is a little bit different for processing the elements, especially when I have two parallel lists of one list containing all my expressions, strings, all my T programs, and another one containing all the expected values in parallel. Yeah, I can walk through that. But you know, we can do better. Let's go ahead and do the same thing we did here. And this explains why I have this pair object sitting off as a helper. I'm gonna make a pair of, of things here. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing I did, except it's only gonna be a pair. I'm never gonna have three, but I'm just gonna have a T0 expression and the number it should evaluate to, the raw, double, or int that it should evaluate to. Okay, and so yeah, what does, I'm, I'm gonna make this pair, put it in something called all tests, exact same name as before, so I'm gonna have a list of pairs, a list of things of length two. Okay, uh, and then what am I gonna, going to do? I'm gonna go ahead and I have my own test parse two string, test eval, 
uh, and so on. And uh, we're going to actually run with all tests. This is in setup. Let me look for where all tests gets used. Oh, the test parse to string, looks like. For every T in here, go ahead, pull out the first. So it's, this is the line that really does all the testing. It goes ahead and calls, um, calculates actual and expected, compare them for white space, uh, ignoring white space, and then call something. If I pass a test, I go ahead and call this function. If it, if I know, I, I don't actually call assert equals until I know it's going to fail, but that's just sort of the way the Java code worked out. Anyway, the point is, now you maybe understand what this pair is doing is so that I can have this list of a program and this output. Um, you might say I should have a pair of string and num, my value, uh, and I could have, except that I want to write 12, I don't want to write new num of 12 over and over and over again, so somewhere else that happens that I actually turn that into a num or otherwise do that conversion. Um, and say, so, well, why not a pair of string, comma, capital I, integer? I could, except this might be a double, so I say, I guess I should have said string, comma, capital N number. There is a class number in Java, which integer and double are both subclasses of. That's probably what I would be even more appropriate here, but. Okay, so the point is you want to add new tests, just go ahead and add new things to all tests. Um, this one, the Java never checks for the internal structure, never tests that, hey, when you call parse, I get back a certain tree that I expect. That's probably the most important check to do, and we sort of punt on it. Why I can't really have a list of length two or three easily in Java. Uh, you try other ways, and you're just fighting with the type system, or, 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 and I just sort of like, ah, forget it. So I do some testing. Uh, I will take the string, I'll parse it to get a tree and call two string. See if that's the same as the string that I started with, but I don't actually check that it's equal to, that if it fails, like where did it fail? I'll have to do more detective work. Um, uh, if it succeeds, things are probably doing, everything's probably working just fine, but when it fails, I'll have to say, well, did it fail when it converted the parse tree from one from the string to the parse tree, or did it fail when it from the parse tree back to the string? So, okay. So that's why we have that class pair. If you want to add new tests, add things here. The tests in Java are not quite as, the odd, these automated tests, putting, adding things to this list is not quite as thorough a test as it was in the racket where you could also have optionally specified the parse tree as the third part of each little test line here. Okay, go to, hey, it's kind of a fun project. We're gonna go and make our own language and add all sorts of, of cool stuff. Awesome.